folks, it's Sage the Hunting Gear Guy. This is a Swedish Mauser. It's in 65 by 55 I was looking for a PAL course gun. I was thinking about maybe using like a, an Enfield, a 303, but uh, these things were also pretty cheap, uh, right around 260 And so I picked one up of, to, to use for a PAL course. Um, Got a, a separate firing pin, so I didn't need to modify the one that it came with. That one's safely in the bag, and I have a deactivated one in here. But one thing I was, I was actually really impressed by the quality of rifle I got for 260 bucks. Like, yeah, okay, it's a chopped stock. The barrels are gonna be chopped at some point. Uh, and there's some like weird things with scoping and whatever, but, uh, but all in all, like, uh, I was really impressed by the quality of what I was getting. So I was like, ah, oh, man, this is actually pretty good. So I was telling a couple of buddies of mine, uh, inner surplus had a sale for black Friday. I was like, oh, I want to get one of these. And like, I want to get one of these and then I want to get one. So I have four right next to me here that, uh, that we're going to be taking a look at. And I'm going to just kind of go through, uh, some of the pros and cons of them. Uh, what, uh, what I find between all uh, all four of them and what you might want to look for if you're looking for a sporterized Mauser. Um, just to mention, yeah, they're all clear. Uh, I wouldn't start a video without clearing the guns first. Now, the first thing you're going to want to check it for, um, keeping in mind, I'm thinking about using this for hunting. Uh, so that's what I'm thinking of. I'm not, I'm not going to like restore it. A lot of these have, have the barrel chop, they're missing sights. Like it would cost too much to, uh, to restore this for right now. Uh, for right now, it would, it would cost too much. Um, maybe later, uh, it'll, it'll be worth it when, if, if the supply goes down, but, uh, but for now, cheap hunting rifle, uh, <laughs> for now, for now. Uh, so cartridge, what, what should you go for, for cartridge? A lot of these come in, uh, otter cartridges that we don't find in North America very often. Uh, they come in eight millimeter Mauser, which is kind of hard to find. Like you're not going to find that at a, your ye old hunting store. You're probably going to have to order online. Seven millimeter Mauser, also kind of hard to find. Uh, 6.5 Swedish Mauser, a little bit easier to find. You can actually find this at, uh, they're quite expensive right now, but you can find it at hunting stores. I can find this stuff at Cabela's and that kind of thing, or I can order online to be, make it cheaper, or I'm going to reload for it and make it even cheaper. Uh, so that I opted for 6.5 Swedish because I really like my 6.5 Creedmoor and this is practically the same thing. Like it's, it's a different case. It's a different, all the, all that kind of stuff. This is like one of the first smokeless rounds as, as, as well for, for the Swedes. So, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a pretty old round, but man, they got it right, right on the start. Like, okay. The original one would have been like using like some big monster bullet on it, but uh, loaded up with, uh, with appropriate bullets for, for today's day and age. Uh, it's really good. So it's, it's practically the same thing as 6.5 Creed more ballistically. The case on the 6.5 is like a little, is a little bit better for a couple of different reasons, but close enough, close enough. So that's the one I went with, uh, less commonly they're available in 30 odd six, which if you can get one of them in 30 odd six, like a good, good version, uh, that stuff's really easy to find. Uh, 9.3 by 57. That's that, uh, seven millimeter Mauser case necked up or eight millimeter. I don't know if there's a difference necked up to, uh, to 9.3, which is, uh, which is big. That's, uh, that's, that's quite wide. Uh, and then there's 9.3 by 62, which is just, let's get the most power possible into these things. They're producing right around 35 foot, a uh, hundred foot pounds, uh, which is, uh, a lot, a lot of power, not a lot for reloading components for like, for, for a lot of this stuff. 6.5 Swedish, you'll find, you might find some seven mil or eight mil Mauser, um, uh, 30 out six, obviously you're going to find, but anyways, I, I thought I'd go for 6.5 Swede because, uh, the performance is good. I can get the rounds and I can reload for it. Next things you'll want to look for is uh, wear and tear and, uh, redneck modifications. I'm going to rip through these, uh, these rifles here just to kind of show you the differences. But, uh, uh, this, whoa, this first one I got, uh, had some redneck modifications. Okay. No iron sights on it, but it has scope bases. This one has weaver, uh, weaver bases that are drilled and tapped into it, but it has a straight bolt. This is not going to work. <laughs> you can't have these two things on here. So I think they partially sporterized this one and maybe gave up. Uh, just didn't bother like doing the rest because you can't do that. And the other the way that you know that um, they kind of screwed up this sporterization, uh, they didn't do anything with that flag. And again, my scope goes here. How do I get access to this little, and like this safety, like you really have to reef on it to move it over. So uh, I don't think they really thought this one through. I don't think they, they thought through uh, what you can do with it. Oh, incidentally. Uh, okay. So there's uh, there's off safe. 
Uh, there's safety on, but I can still run my bolt. And then there is safety on, bolt locked. So pretty cool in terms of uh, in terms of that. Um, let's, uh, let's look at another rifle. Now this next one is uh, the one that my buddy Thomas got. And there's a couple of things I really like on this version. A, it's got iron sights, uh, so that's really nice, the, the iron sights on it. Uh, the rear sight is canted just a little bit, but as long as it hits, I, that's fine for me. Uh, we've got a turned down bolt on this one, so it's nice and close to the stock. Gives us uh, lots of room there. Uh, this one still makes use of the factory safety, so if we wanted to scope this, we'd have to do something with that to, to get it out of the way. Um, and the stock is really nice and light and trim on this one. This one's way lighter than uh, any of the other ones. And it just feels really great putting up on the shoulder. So uh, really nice for a iron sight uh, version of these things. This is the version that my buddy Will got. Uh, it is missing a butt plate or butt pad on this thing. It is, it's got a nice cheek swell here for a lefty. And they've opted to put a ball on this uh, on this bolt just to make it a little bit easier to uh, to run. The other cool thing about this one is that it's got a ver it, they left most of the length on the bottom of the stock to kind of give it like a I don't know if it's a man liquor stock kind of a look, but of like a full stock on the bottom. There's also checkering that they've added in to uh, to give yourself a little bit more grip, and it's got some I don't know what these sight bases are. If any of you know what kind of sight bases these are, let me know because. Uh, this thing doesn't have a sighting solution otherwise. We got iron sights. Uh, the safety is unmodified. This one's a little bit smoother to, uh, to run. Let's just see if we can get it all the way over. There we go. Yeah, this, this safety is just a little bit smoother to run. Um, but we're gonna need those. We're gonna need to mount some like, figure out how to mount some rings to this thing to, uh, to get a sight on or a scope on it, right? So. Uh, that one, again, some really nice things about this one, uh, and uh, the stock looks fantastic on it. And then we get to the, the one I got, my second uh, uh, Swedish Mauser, and that's this guy here. So it's got more of a target stock on it. This stock is really heavy, and the barrel's really long. So this is the heaviest of, uh, of the four guns that, uh, that we, I've got right here. Uh, it does have a plastic butt pad on the back, which is kind of nice. But a lot of modifications were done by, I'd imagine, some version of a Swedish redneck. Uh, the bolt handle, it, the brazing job on it is uh, got quite a bit of boogers on it. And the safety that has been modified and put on it, this uh, angled one right here, that kind of half moon shape there, uh, it doesn't feel great. And it, uh, it looks like it was kind of hacked on there. Uh, because, but it's necessary because that, like having a flag here, I wouldn't have the space for a scope. So you can see I can fit this scope, this uh, scope here fairly low. I'll still need, I still need like a little bit of a cheek rest on here, but it's not that bad. Uh, and that's only because that safety uh, is uh, is kind of turned out of the way. So right now it's on fire, uh, and if I turn it down, it's on safe. So I only get two modes with this one. I don't get. Um, I don't get like safety on and I get to run the bolt, only one or the other. And it interferes sometimes with the scope. So you have to like wiggle it around so it clears the scope on you. But all in all, I mean, it's still uh, set up as a hunting rifle now. So uh, why don't we take these things out to the range and uh, give a little run through.
right. So I showed you some of the difficulties there with uh, with scoping. I just want to show you one of the other options that you might want to look for uh, when when looking at these things, and that's one that has a, a trigger based safety. They'll look something like this. It's a little side safety, and if you go with something like that, well. Now you don't need to access the flag. You can leave the flag on fire. This will block the safety. It doesn't block the steer, just blocks the safety. So this is still a, an unsafe rifle, uh, but that's good enough for hunting. I'm gonna keep my booger hook off the trick bang switch. And then when I need to fire, I'll put it onto the fire and fire it. Now, some of these rifles are gonna have nicer triggers than some of the other ones. Uh, this one, the trigger is okay. Uh, what, you're, what, we, what we want for a trigger is, uh, these are two stage trigger is uh, take up, take up and then it fires. And so the trigger on this one is good. Uh, the weight on it is a little bit heavy and I'll just show you that now. A little bit heavy, it's fine for a hunting rifle. I don't know why I said that. Let's just pull this one and see what we get here. So there's our take up. And we're just over four pounds, which is fine. That's fine for a hunting rifle. I'm gonna put this one off to the side pop this guy out here. Now, the trigger on this one, I would say is not great for one reason. There's no, like you can't feel the sear. <laughs> I just pulled straight through it, which is not, like you wanna be able to, to consistently fire, right? Be able to, to know when the gun's about to fire when you're aiming at a deer. And this one, it doesn't have a positive sear engagement on there. So that results in that just pull, 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 and it just fires and, uh, I don't know, some people might like that. I don't really like that. This one has a Timney trigger in it. Uh, so it's got like quite a good trigger and uh, quite a light trigger as well. So there is no travel on that one. It just fires when you pull on it. And it, it's also quite light. So we've got a couple of advantage there. I'll show you the uh, trigger pull on this one. So like if you wanted to, you could put a Timney trigger on. It'd be better if you can get one that has it already. So it's just not another cost to add on to this thing. Two pounds, two pound trigger on this thing from, uh, not from the factory, from Swedish redneck land. I, we've got a two pound trigger uh, on this one, but a pretty nice trigger, right? And just so we're showing all of them, uh, this one's got a nice two stage. So it's got that two stage prep and then it's got a nice clean break on it as well. So a uh, decent trigger on this one, I'd say. The only one that's that's kind of like unsafe uh, is uh, is this one because you just can't feel any of that sear engagement in there and uh, it's hard to know when it's actually going to go boom. So should you get a sporterized Mauser? I think that depends really on what you're going to do with it uh, because sporterized Enfields are out there right now, especially in here in Canada. Uh, they're similar in price, a little bit more expensive. Um, so a, a sporterized Swedish Mauser, for example, is between 240 to 350. Whereas the sporterized Enfield is, is going to be three to four hundred dollars. Pretty similar, pretty similar in price. The Enfield is going to be easier to scope. You can get a scope mount for them, and uh, the safety is out of the way and the bolt is bent. So those things aren't going to hold you back like they would on the Mauser. Uh, if you wanted to go with iron sights and the Mauser you buy with uh, comes with iron sights, you're good to go. There's not really much to do there. Some of the cartridges are easy to reload for, still not avail as available as 303. So in many ways, the, the, a sporterized Enfield is going to be better for some kinds of shooting. Uh, it's not as solid of, a, of an action, um, but it also holds 10 rounds. It also has a stripper clip that works really well and a couple other things going for it. Uh, but if you wanted like uh, a hunting rifle that you could do very little to, some of these sporterized, uh, like uh, the one that's sitting right up here, I just slapped a scope on it and it was good to go. And I paid very little for it. It's got a fantastic trigger. Uh, it's got a nice smooth action, uh, a lot of really positives. And, and the cartridge it has, uh, 6.5 Swede on that one, is not very heavy kicking. So it's gonna be fantastic for deer hunting and that kind of thing. Um, it's going to be the cheapest hunting rifle you can get right now, other than let's say a, a shotgun uh, because uh, so let's let's clarify. Center fire card rifle cartridge. Yes, Mausers could could potentially be this the this too cheapest at that. Um, above that, like Carcanos are three hundred bucks ish, but uh, <laughs> they're not, they're terrible hunting rifles. You can get a, a like a Kentucky Traditions uh, muzzle loader kit if you really wanted to, 
And those are fun. They're accurate, uh, but they're not like, they're not a practical hunting rifle. They're, there's a lot of a pain in the butt in terms of like running a muzzle loader that you'll have to deal with. Uh, and above that, you got to go to, you know, your, your new uh, hunting rifles. So as a very inexpensive hunting rifle, they're a good deal. As a fun, like, shooter at the range, fantastic. Uh, there's some other options out there. Always take a look at the Sporterized Enfields as well. But otherwise, you might want to take a look at the uh, Sporterized Mausers. Thanks for watching.